Here we have a graph of the surface f of x, y, and we want to get the volume between the surface and the x, y plane. We consider a slice through the surface that is parallel to the y, z plane. This slice has thickness delta x. Now we know that the area between this curve here and the x, y plane is given by the integral of the function from this point here, which is y equals c, to this point here, y equals d. Remember, integration just involves summing infinitely many thin rectangles of width dy in this case. The height of each rectangle is given by the value of the function at this point here. Well, the x value of this point is x. We're taking the slice at position x on the x-axis. So we're getting the value of the function at x comma y at this particular point. That'll give us the height of this rectangle and we multiply by the width of the rectangle which is dy. We sum all those rectangles from y equals c to y equals d. So that's the area of this slice and we multiply that area by delta x to get an approximation to the volume of this slice. So the thickness is delta x, so this point here is x plus delta x. So to get an approximation to the volume under the surface, we should consider summing all these slices for each value of x. So here we just have one particular slice for this particular value of x, but we can imagine rep repeating this process for all values of x running from a to b. Now I will call the exact volume v and it's approximated by summing all these slices. We will assume that the thickness of each slice is delta x. Now if we let the thickness delta x of each slice become infinitesimally small then we can replace delta x with dx and this summation sign with an integral sign from x equals a to x equals b. Now I may give more rigorous justifications for this process in other videos, but for now we'll just discuss applying this method. Let's look at this example. We want to get the double integral of the function 2x plus y from x equals 0 to x equals 5 and y equals minus 1 to y equals plus 1. So we want the area, or sorry, the volume under this surface here or I should say the volume between this surface and this rectangular region of the xy plane. So I'm not showing the z-axis, it's going into or out of the screen. Here's the origin of the coordinate system. This region of the xy plane is a rectangular region. You can see it runs from x equals 0 to x equals 5 and from y equals minus 1 to y equals plus 1. To solve this problem, we start with this inner integral here. We have to integrate 2x plus y with, with respect to y from y equals minus 1 to y equals plus 1. So we treat x as a constant. So we integrate 2x with respect to y. Well, we'll just get 2x multiplied by y. Since x is a constant, 2x is treated as a constant. The integral of a constant with respect to y is that constant times y. So we get 2x times y. Integrating y with, with respect to y gives us a half y squared. So we plug the upper limit in for y, so we get 2x plus a half times 1 squared, that's 2x plus a half. Then we have a minus sign. We write this expression out again, replacing y with minus 1. And if we work this out, we get 4x. So you, you see that since we integrated a function with respect to y, we end up with something that is a function of x only. So y does not appear in the result for the inner integral. Next, we look at the outer integral, the integral of x equals 0 to x equals 5 of the inner integral with respect to x. Well, the inner integral is 4x, so we integrate 4x with respect to x. Um, we add 1 onto the power to get x squared, divide the coefficient of x by 2 to get 2, and we sub in our limits, so our answer is 50. Let's take this example here. The surface is x squared y, and we want the volume between this surface and the region shown here in the picture. 
So this is a region in the XY plane. It's a rectangular region as you can see. The sides of the rectangle run from minus 1 to plus 2. They're the limits of this integral. And from minus 2 to plus 3, they're the limits of the second integral. So to get the inner integral, we have to integrate from minus 2 to 3 of x squared y with respect to y. So we treat x squared as a constant. So we have y to the power of 1. Integrating that gives us a half y squared. And the x squared constant remains here. So we plug in our limits, plug 3 in for y. So 3 squared is 9, we get 9 halves x squared. And we have a minus sign, then plug in minus 2 for y. So we get um, a half x squared by 4. So we end up at 5 halves x squared. Notice again that we just have a function of x because we integrated a function of x and y with respect to y. So now we just deal with the outer integral. We have to integrate that result, that is 5 halves x squared, with respect to x from x equals minus 1 to 2. If you plug in the limits, you'll get 15 over 2 for the final answer. Let's take this example here. This is our inner integral. Now, this is our surface, and we are integrating it with respect to y. So we treat x as a constant, so we can take x e to the minus x outside this integral. Notice that the derivative of the denominator is a multiple of the numerator. So we can use the substitution u equals y squared plus 1. Differentiating this, we get du dy equals 2y. To make dy the subject, we get dy equals du over 2y. Also, if uh, y is minus 2, that's the lower limit of this integral, we get u equals minus 2 squared plus 1, that's 5. The upper limit of this integral is 3. If y is 3, we get u equals 3 squared plus 1, which is 10. So we make our substitutions. We see the y's disappear. We can factorize, factorize out 1 over 2. And we're integrating 1 over u with respect to u. Well, that integral is the ln of the magnitude of u. So we plug in our limits. ln 10 minus ln 5 is ln 10 divided by 5, or ln of 2. Well, ln of magnitude 2, but the magnitude of 2 is just 2, of course. So now that we've found our inner integral, we need to integrate it with respect to x from minus 1 to 2. Now to evaluate this integral we have to use integration by parts because you can see that this term x is not the derivative of the power of the exponential function. So we have a product of functions here. One of them can be considered an algebraic term, that's x, and the exponential function or differential is what's left. So in our rule LIATE, this is our rule for integration by parts, we can see that um, the exponential term is x, or sorry, the algebraic term is x, but the, exponen the exponential bit here comes after the algebraic term in this rule. So we let u equal x, that com x comes first, comes before a becomes bef before e here. So if u is x, the rest of this is dv. So dv is e to the minus x times dx. So we have to uh, differentiate u with respect to x. That gives us 1. So du dx equals 1 or du equals dx. And we have to integrate e to the minus x with respect to x to go from dv to v. Next we apply our integration by parts formula. We have to multiply u by v. So we have to multiply x by minus e to the power of minus x and apply our limits to this product, u times v, that's from minus 1 to 2. Then we've minus the integral of v du. v is minus e to the minus x, and we multiply that by du. du is just dx. So uh, we plug 2 in here, so we get minus 2 e to the minus 2. Then we've a minus sign, and then we plug minus 1 in here, so we've minus, minus, minus 1 e to the plus 1. So we'll end up at minus e to the plus 1 for the lower limit here. These two minuses give a plus. Um, when we integrate e to the minus x with respect to x, we get minus e to the minus x. Plus 1 
plug in the upper limit so we get 2 so we get minus e to the minus 2 we put that with minus 2 e to the minus 2 to get minus 3 e to the minus 2 then we subtract this thing with minus 1 in for x so that gives us plus e to the plus 1 which cancels with minus e to the plus 1 anyway to two decimal places this is minus 0 0.14